Welcome to our Bible study beside Henson Creek. The sun was just like pouring down right here. Uh, and we were thinking, oh, maybe we should move this around. And I was thinking, you know, it would be wonderful if the Lord would just send a cloud. And so just when we start, a cloud comes. I was going to ask Brother Zach to pray for a cloud. And, but I didn't think of it. I didn't remember. So uh, There is a scripture where our Heavenly Father promises, before they call... I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. We are going to sing the song, God Will Take Care of You, and we will, our goal is to sing this song for the next six, six consecutive lessons. Be not dismayed, whate'er be tied, God will take care of you. Beneath His wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Through days of toil when your heart doth fail, God will take care of you. When dangers fierce your path assail, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. All you may need, He will provide. God will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be denied. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Okay, let's begin with prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you do take care of us. We're asking that you will bind Satan and his evil angels, that our minds could focus, that this message could go to the depth of our heart. Father, give us a willingness to give up whatever you're calling us to give up. Give us strength to embrace your will for our lives. We thank you and we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua. Amen. We have a new memory verse. It is in the book of Isaiah, chapter 33. We have a new book. Yes. Yeah, we, we're starting on a new book. And... That's exciting. Our memory verse is Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 16. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be sure. Isaiah 33, 16. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be sure. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be sure. Bread shall be given him, his water shall be sure. Isaiah 33, 16. He shall dwell on high, his place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him, his water shall be sure. 
He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be sure. Isaiah 33, 16. I've memorized it before, but I'm a little rusty. So. Did you memorize the whole thing? Or the whole thing. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Yes, this is one that we all should memorize. Because all of God's people, when the beast rises up, will be living in the rocks, in the caves, in the wilderness. And we will be tempted to doubt our Heavenly Father's care and provision for us. But this promise is for God's people, especially at the very end, at the time of trouble. Who would like to try with the first letters? Brother Aaron. Nice catch. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the... Munitions. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be... Don't tell me his water shall... Sh his water shall be sure. Yes. I want to try it over. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munition of rocks. A munition of rocks? Plural, munitions. Munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be sure. Isaiah 33, 16. Wow. That's a tough excellent. one. That's excellent for the first day. Brother Justin, would you like to try? Sure. Good catch. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be sure. Isaiah 33, 16. Excellent. Brother Zach, are you going to do it? I'm not going to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, he shall dwell on high. His place. Place. Of. Of. Defense. Defense shall be the munitions of rock. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be sure. Isaiah 33, 16. Very good. Excellent, Stephanie. Good job. Mm -hmm. Memorizing scripture helps to keep us motivated when we are working with other brothers and sisters. We are in lesson number one, water, a battle and counsel. We just did our memory verse from Isaiah 33, 16. We're gonna look at the character quality of trustfulness, which is reliance on the character, strength, or the truth of God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. We are going to look at what is a flower. Okay. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Exodus, chapter 17 and verses 1 through 7. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord and pitched in Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt, to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee of the elders of Israel, and thy rod wherewith thou smotest the river, Take in thine hand and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. 
And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the chiding of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? After traveling from the wilderness of sin, the children of Israel set up camp in Rephidim. There was no water there. Once more, the people distrusted God. They complained to Moses, Give us water that we may drink. As soon as God tested them, they complained. They complained that Moses was trying to kill them. They had forgotten their promise to trust God. Just think how happy the children of Israel could have made their heavenly Father if instead of murmuring, they had said by faith, Our God shall supply all our needs. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Every temptation to distrust God is also an opportunity to show our appreciation of His tender watch care by expressing our trust in Him. But instead of doing this, the children of Israel were about ready to stone Moses. Moses prayed to God, saying, What shall I do? unto this people. Exodus 17, verse 4. God directed Moses to do the following things. Take of the elders of Israel and thy rod, go to the rock of Horeb, thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it. Did Moses trust God? Yes, he obeyed, and the waters burst forth in a living stream that abundantly supplied the encampment. Instead of commanding Moses to lift up his rod and call down some terrible plague, like those on Egypt, upon the leaders in this wicked murmuring, the Lord in his great mercy made the rod his instrument to work in their deliverance. Do you trust God in your daily life? Review questions. What had the children of Israel failed to do? I would say trust Moses, um, and in lacking in, in lacking to trust God, they yes. didn't trust Moses. That's true. Because it was like one stone built upon another. That's that right. Makes any sense. Absolutely. Yes. I like how you put that, Aaron. Yes. Uh, by trusting their heavenly Father, they would have also trusted His servant Moses, but they did not. What four things did God direct Moses to do? The answer is found in Exodus chapter 17, verses 5 through 6. Those four things are also spelled out in our lesson. There's four points there. Take of the elders of Israel. That was one. Take the, the, thy rod. That's two. Go to the rock of Horeb. Thou shalt, and then four, smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it. Hmm. Okay. Did Moses trust God? Oh, absolutely. He sure did. Yeah. How did he trust God? The answer is found in chapter 17 and verse 6. Go ahead and read verse 6. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock and there shall come water out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so. So he he did so in sight of the elders of Israel. So he just did what God told him to do. Yes. Called instructions. Yes, that's right. So Moses showed his trust in his heavenly father by his actions. When he was told to go and hit the rock. Well, that's crazy. How could hitting a rock bring out water? But he trusted his heavenly father's direction and he did as he was instructed even though it did not seem it did not seem like it would be productive of his time or of his energy he could have thought well I, I may look stupid hitting that rock and nothing happens but he trusted his heavenly father he did as he was instructed so I see that it says he did so, Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. 
my first reaction to that is to ask the question, why didn't he just do it in front of everybody? But he only did it in front of the elders. Because, hmm. you know... Because um, they were, like, taken away, I think. It says, take the elders and go. Mm -hmm. So I think they were separate. I guess just to separate him from the murmuring. That's up for interpretation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe he wanted to take those that had the faith with him. I don't know. Probably a lot less distracting that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you've got a, this whole crowd of complaining people. But then if he had some elders that were also trusting God, then many times when God works, he works within the framework of the group and so if you have a large body of people who are not believers it seems that those who believe birds of a feather flock together so there's a, a separation between those who trust God and those who do not trust him mm -hmm. and so it sounds like this separation those who trusted God were with Moses and those who distrusted God were not What is a flower? The word flower means the best of everything. That is just what God was giving the children of Israel, the best of everything. They needed to learn trust in Him that He was providing them the best food, water, and protection. The flower is the reproductive part of any seed-bearing plant. Weeds, trees, shrubs, vines, vegetables, and grasses all have flowers. There are about 250,000 varieties of flowering plants. There were over a million Israelites who came out of Egypt. Some were like weeds, some like trees, some like vines, but all needed to learn to trust their lives to God so they could bloom and fulfill the purpose God intended for them. Flowers grow almost everywhere. From snow-covered mountains to hot, dry deserts, wherever they grow, that place is more beautiful. The children of Israel were like flowers trying to grow on the desert. However, they needed to learn to trust in God that they might make the desert a beautiful flower garden. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Isaiah 35, 1 and 2. God may allow the little landscape of our lives to become barren like a desert, so that others may see by way of contrast. So that others may see by way of contrast the excellency of our God, causing us to bloom in such unfavorable circumstances. As you work together as a family, learn to trust God and one another. Do chores that build trust such as holding or handing a nail for father as he pounds it with a hammer. Or you may have a sliver of wood in your finger or in your toe, and you have to trust your mom to pull it out with the tweezers. Hmm. Let's look for wild flowers and learn to identify them. If you have the opportunity dig up or buy a cactus plant and this can be an object lesson of the children of Israel in Egypt. When we take into our own hands the management of things with which we have to do and depend upon our own wisdom for success, we are taking a burden which God has not given us. and we are trying to bear it without His aid. We are taking upon ourselves the responsibility that belongs to God, and thus we are really putting ourselves in His place. 
we may well have anxiety and anticipate danger and loss, for it is certain to befall us. But when we really believe that God loves us and means to do us good, we shall cease to worry about the future. Mm. But when we really believe that God loves us and means to do us good, we shall cease to worry about the future. We have a Heavenly Father who cares for His daughters. We have a Heavenly Father who cares for His sons. Sometimes we focus on all the things going on and we forget what He's done for us in the past. But when we realize that our Heavenly Father has our best interest at heart and we really realize that, we will stop worrying about the future. We shall trust God as a child trusts a loving parent. Then our troubles and torments will disappear, for our will is swallowed up in the will of God. Wow. We have a Heavenly Father who cares. We have a Heavenly Father who the Bible says all our tears are in His bottle. In the book of 1 Peter, it says, Casting all your cares upon Him, for He careth for you. Any other thoughts? So this lesson made me think of specifically the trial that Titus and I are going through. And my sister said to me, like, why is God allowing this to happen? Why is it getting this bad? Why isn't he stopping it? Why isn't he intervening? Like, I'm starting to doubt that God even cares. And for me, I know that's not true because he has been with me all this way and I refuse to hold on to this is my problem. When I start feeling like this is my problem, I give it back to the Lord. And so I am able to withstand this extreme heat because I'm not going to hold on to it. I give it to him and I say, this is for you to deal with. And whatever way you see best, I will trust you. Amen. And so I told her, like, this is my test. I'm being tested to the ultimate, the max. Mm -hmm. Will you continue to trust me or will you doubt? And so I think that this trial is actually easier for me than it is for my family because I'm able to not hold on to it, but give it to the Lord and fully trust him. Yes. And we have seen our Heavenly Father intervene in this situation. We have seen Him intervene. And for sake of time, we're not going to go into specifics. But when this is all over with, we're going to be able to tell you the details. And it's going to be an amazing testimony of God's power to deliver. He saved Daniel out of the lion's den. He brought the children of Israel out of Egypt from the unhealthy, oppressive control of Pharaoh. He brought the children of Israel out of Babylon. He raised up a deliverer to set them free from the oppression of the Philistines. Over and over and over, our Heavenly Father has intervened. But there was years when Daniel was a captive in Babylon. Years of wishing he could go back home to his homeland, where he was born, to his roots. Years where it didn't seem like God had intervened. But the day came when Daniel was thrown into the den of lions and he experienced 
divine intervention. And in this situation, it does seem at times, it does seem like our Heavenly Father has not intervened. But He has. And He will. And we will have a testimony. We will have a testimony of God's amazing deliverance. Rachel and Rebecca and Jeremiah will be back here on Henson Creek House of Prayer to worship with us, work together. They will be. Do we know when? No, we do not know when. But we trust that our Heavenly Father will bring it about in His good time. Thank you all for praying about this situation. I'm thankful that I am an American and that I am in this American Republic. And there are things that are not just, but overall, we have a lot to be thankful for in this land that we live in. On the 4th of July. Yes, <laughs> and it is the 4th of July. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the ones who gave that right to me. Hitler wanted to take over the world. He did not give people freedom to study their Bibles, to follow their conscience. He was a dictator. Many dictators have risen and fallen. I am thankful for this American Republic, the Constitution that has been given to us. I'm thankful for years of life here, for 32 years of life in this American Republic. I am thankful that on July 4th, 1776, that our forefathers declared their independence from the tyranny of Great Britain. And under the principles of God, they formed a new government with freedom for religious worship. You see, before our forefathers signed that declaration of independence, in order to come here to America, you had to be a member of the Church of England. And in order to be in the Church of England, you had to affirm, you had to swear that the King of England was the head of the church. Who is the head of the church? Well, Jesus. Jesus. Christ is the head of the church. And so there was many people who said, I cannot be an Anglican. I cannot be a, a member of the Church of England because I cannot swear, I cannot affirm that the King of England is the head of the church. No, Christ is the only head of the church. And so it was ill... No yeah, yes, and so the, the American Republic was founded with the vision that there would be no pope and no king. No pope and no king. And so it was actually illegal to come over to this country unless you would swear, unless you would affirm that the King of England is the head of the church. And so thankfully there were people who came over here who had a conscience. Some of them came over here kind of under the table. But people like Roger Williams, who had this concept of the separation of church and state. And these men saw these broad principles to give people freedom, to give the people of this land freedom. And this land is like no other. Our forefathers, they said in the preamble of the Constitution, they said that God has created all men equally and that He has given to us the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Certain inalienable rights I can't pronounce that word very well, but that means these rights, nobody can take them away from you. These are not our constitutional rights. These are not our government-given rights. Our forefathers understood this. These are God-given rights. 
Your constitutional rights are not rights that are given to you by your government. The forefathers wrote this with the intent that your constitutional rights are God-given rights. So the Constitution is a document telling the government, here are the God-given rights of the people, and government, you must respect the God-given rights of this people. The Constitution is a document intended to limit the encroachment of government into the private Christian convictions of individuals. I am thankful that we have a constitution. They were closing down churches during COVID and pastors were going to jail for keeping their churches open. The government said, just worship on Zoom. Well, there were some pastors who decided that Pharaoh was not going to tell the people how or when they would worship. And there were some pastors who paid the price, who went to jail, who had that ankle bracelet on their leg because they would not bow down to the Pharaoh in modern day. And they kept their churches open because they believed they have a constitutional right to do so. No coward shall enter the kingdom of heaven. The Bible says the, fe the fearful go to the lake of fire. That's right. If you're fearful, you don't trust your heavenly father. So a federal judge eventually ruled, I don't remember the date, but this was during the COVID pandemic. The federal judge ruled that it would be unconstitutional for the government to, for a long period of time, keep the churches closed. There was a federal judge who believed at the federal level that we still have a constitution, that people still have the God-given right to go and worship their creator in person. This judge recognized that uh, if people have a right to go to Walmart to buy some physical food, then certainly the people must also have the right to go in person to their house of prayer, their house of worship, and be fed with spiritual food. Thank God that there are people in our American Republic, high up in the government, who believe in the Constitution. The Bible says that in the book of Timothy, 1 Timothy, I forget the reference, it says, pray for kings. For all those in authority. Why? So that we could live a quiet and peaceable life. Here is one of my failures. I forget. In my prayers, I oftentimes forget to pray for those who are in authority over me in this American Republic in which I am privileged to have been born into. Earlier, I brought up um, in reference to the Demic that we had a few years ago. Plandemic? Sure. For when they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction come upon them. Uh, I, noticed, I noticed early in COVID that people were saying, stay safe, slow the spread. And there were other things that were being preached. It seems like back even before that. And it seems like the, the more they preach peace, peace and safety, and the more of that culture that preaches it, it seems like the more we lose our rights and freedoms. Mm -hmm. And uh, we people are becoming so cowardly and they want protectors, mm -hmm. um, and they desire, you know, uh, protectors in all ways and all situations. But mm -hmm. when you give up the right, or you give up the the authority over your family or over your household to actually defend your own household, and you depend on some external source that's ten miles away or whatever to come and do it, you're not going to be free. Mm -hmm. Personally, I don't have a gun in my home with the intention to defend it with firepower, but I recognize that we have a constitutional right to do so. He and so by the sword. I, I, I support people's right to have bare arms and defend their homes or their properties. I support that right. Uh, but uh, yes, I'm very thankful that the best security system to have is your Heavenly Father's protection and His care. I like that. Um, I think it was in a Peter video or there's this lady that called you and she was trying to sell you a security system. <laughs> that was just great because, you know, I think the last thing you need here is a security system. You have your dogs and, you know, you're not laying up treasure in your house. But it's just kind of, it was a funny concept. Yeah, somebody called and said, hey, we have this security system and it's, uh, you know, help keep your, your home secure and safe. And 
Um, they were telling me about their security system, and uh, I said, uh, okay, well, would you like for me to tell you about my security system that I already have? Uh, it doesn't require electricity, and it's, it's actually free. Would you like to know about it? And the representative of the security system said, well, um, yeah, I guess so. And I said, well, the Bible says in Psalm 34, verse 8, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. That's my security system. I'm guarded, surrounded by angels. And she's like, um, oh, Oh, okay, uh, 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 yeah, I have to go. All right, have a nice day. <laughs> Bye. At Titus, where I live, um, it's very, very, very common for people to have ring doorbells and security cameras and security systems. And I feel like the more we become dependent on such things, the more we engage with fear. And, you know, I imagine some people are traveling or they're in a restaurant or they're at work and they're on their phone and they're just like checking the phone to make sure that, oh, who was that on my porch? Okay, it's the UPS guy, but... Mm -hmm. You know, uh, just let it go. Mm. You know, for lack of a better term, don't live in fear. That's right. You can't control everything. I mm. know. hope I'm making sense. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, there were some people that were camping across the road from from my barn, and uh, they'd asked me, can I go in your creek? Can we go down in your creek and hang out in your creek and cool off? I said, sure, you know, any time. And so then later I thought, oh, no. I made a mistake, you know, because they have to go past my barn to get to the creek and they could see my chainsaw in there. And, you know, I don't have doors or locks on my barn and, you know, they could really clean me out, you know. And so then at that time, it, most every weekend I would drive my horse to my parents' place and spend the weekend there and then come back for the week to be here. And so I thought, oh, no, you know, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have given them permission to go down the creek there. Um, and there was a drug problem, you know. Uh, with them and so I I was concerned so I uh, I prayed and I said father in heaven would you please uh, send you know an angel or send some guard over my place while I'm gone and so then uh, I was gone for a week and I came back and uh, the man said well I was walking with my woman past your barn and we were going to go to your creek there and then I saw this really big dog and the hair stood up on the back of my neck and I didn't tell my woman that I saw the dog because I didn't want her to be scared. And, he said, and I said, so I just crept by the dog. He said, Titus, do you have a really big dog? I said, well, I have Spartacus. Was it Spartacus? He said, no, it wasn't Spartacus. It was this big dog and it put the fear into me. And so I said, oh, okay. And I thought to myself, either the Lord inspired a huge dog to spend some time hanging out in my barn, or an angel of the Lord appeared in the form of a huge dog that would make him so afraid that he wouldn't even think about going inside the barn because the dog was guarding at the entrance of the barn. So an old friend of mine, he passed away probably, I don't even know, 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago. His name was Nick Nye. He lived in Leavenworth, Indiana. Um, just a really neat guy. And he liked to hunt, you know, arrowheads and whatnot. And he had a piece of land down on Cold Friday Road in the Harrison Crawford State Forest. And to get to his piece of land, it was 10 acres surrounded by state forest. It was like surrounded by a sea of state forest. It was, it was in the middle of like a 25,000 acre state forest property. Anyway, he had this house, um, it was like a summer home or something, and it was about a 25-mile drive from Leavenworth to get there. And I said, he took me there one day and showed me his place, and uh, it was really neat. And I said, uh, so do you have problems with people breaking in? And he says, no. And I'm like, but it's so remote. There's like a five-mile-long driveway, and there's no houses back there. Just to get to his house, you had to drive five miles on a county road, and where I'm going with this is he would just leave the doors unlocked all the all the time. Yeah, I do too. And I said, didn't don't people break in? Because he had uh, he had some stone um, Native American stone like axe heads. Oh wow! That he'd found just laying out and open on the table. You could walk into the house and see them. He's like, no, that's been there for you know 20 years or whatever. He's like, I don't lock the doors. I just leave it open and it takes care of itself. It was a really interesting philosophy. Um, 
and I know that there's some proverb, there's something in the Bible about tall gates attracting problems. Mm. You, you don't know what I'm referring to. You have a big tall gate, it's going to you're, you're going to get it knocked down because it's mm-hmm. going to attract attention. Mm-hmm. He was doing the opposite, and mm-hmm. it worked out really well. Wow. It was it was like its own security system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yes. Everything was just open. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. No locks on the doors. <laughs> yeah. Let's pray. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, we thank You. You do provide for us. You do take care of us. Over and over we see in the past that You have. Sometimes we worry about the future. Forgive us. Our worry is a result of the fact that sometimes we don't trust You like we could or like we should. Father, bless each one of us that are here and those that will watch later. May Your Holy Spirit be convicting each one of us. May your Holy Spirit be guiding and filling every one of us. Thank you, Father. We ask in the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua. Amen.